Welcome. Uh, for those who don't know who I am, I'm Judge Tom Fugar. I am a reserve judge at this time. Uh, I served uh, Portage County for over 26 years across the hall in Branch 3. And when uh, Cass asked me to preside here today over his swearing in, I was uh, certainly delighted to do so. I uh, watched him grow as an attorney uh, from the day he came to see him. Uh, many of you know Judge Thomas Egan, a colleague of mine for 10 years on the bench. Before that, district attorney for 20 plus years. <laughs> and uh, he is uh, going to be doing the uh, oath of office uh, in a few moments. And so uh, <clears throat> I just wanted to uh, welcome everybody here today uh, and uh, just uh, say a few words before I introduce uh, a couple of speakers. Uh, I first, of course, uh, met Cass uh, when he was hired by then District Attorney Tom Egan. And uh, he was new, he was young, and uh, I got to watch him grow up uh, right before my eyes. And uh, I heard about him shortly thereafter because I was serving on the jury instructions committee and Dave Schultz uh, is the reporter, was the reporter for almost 50 years and he was Mr. Criminal Jury Instruction and he taught at the Wisconsin Law School. And uh, when I mentioned, uh, I don't know, your name came up and I never told you this. And one of the things uh, Dave Schultz and he is a, highly respected person in, uh, in criminal law in uh, the state of Wisconsin. He said, I know Cass Cousins. He's tall, red hair, and he goes, he's really a sharp guy. You've got a good uh, assistant district attorney up there in Polish County. And, uh, and he, he was right. And so, you know, uh, as Cass came here, uh, as a young attorney, you always wonder how long lawyers are gonna stay. Many times these are stepping stones to uh, bigger and better jobs. And I know that some of the younger attorneys that come to Stevens Point, whether they're working at a firm, the public defender, or the DAs, they develop an escape plan. <laughs> <laughs> All the young lawyers want to work in Madison or Milwaukee or Minneapolis or the, big, the bigger cities. And so uh, we were wondering, some of us, you know, I wonder if uh, how long a cast is going to stay. And that's another thing Dave Schultz used to talk about at jury instructions that I always tell the law students, you know, go up north. Don't hang around Madison. There's a lot of great cities uh, up north and on the east, you know, the Box Valley or go to the west, they, you know, they, uh, took a fall and across. And lots of opportunity there. And uh, so as Cass was developing as a lawyer, uh, word came about that at one point uh, that Cass had a girlfriend, and, uh, <laughs> and we said okay. And then we found out she's a professor at the university, and so I think it was DA uh, Tom Egan said, "I think he's going to be here longer than anybody can <laughs> talk." Obviously, she's here with us today, and uh, they got married, and uh, I think they have some pretty deep roots here in Stevens Point, Portage County. Uh, and Dr. Hill, I'm sure somebody else will tell you how long they've been here. They have a son named Cooper, and uh, so uh, it's a delight, and I have many, many more things I could say, but there's other people that can say those uh, for me. So uh, at this time, uh, the Honorable Patricia Baker uh, from Branch 3 has a few words she would like to say before the oath of office. I have to say, I um, first of all, should I pull this out? Or am I supposed to stand in front of this? Is that the idea? Okay, let me um, do this. <laughs> and, um, there. I'm setting this up for you because you're next. Let's <laughs> <laughs> get this right. I am so delighted to be here. I am so delighted to be here for Cass um, and for his uh, swearing in. Um, so I've known Cass since he started here. And uh, I have to say, I feel like I share a little bit of history with him. Um, I was the clerk of court when he was hired. And uh, I remember when he uh, was walking up and down the hallways and trying cases, and he was a brand new attorney. And uh, I remember looking at him thinking, you know, he and I have some, we share some things. Um, you know, my first uh, jury trial, I, I love to tell this story. My first jury trial, 
this man was sitting next to me as DA, and we were both sitting uh, in front of this man up here. And, um, and that was my first jury trial, and then a few trials took place after that, although I have to say uh, in front of him, but uh, not with um, Judge Egan sitting next to me. And I look back and I think, you know what? Um, Cass has got the same story to tell. And, uh, and I think that it's a rich, um, really happy story. And uh, I am so happy that you did not exercise an escape plan, um, <laughs> that you will have decided to stay. And I do have to say, I remember exactly what Judge uh, Fluter was talking about when we heard that you had a girlfriend. And then we heard it was more than a girlfriend, and it was a fiance. And, uh, and then um, we heard that there was a baby and a wedding, and then a baby in that order. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and so what we saw, and so when you decided to go to the AG's office, it was like, oh no, he's going to be moving to Madison, you know, and he's going to take her with and I hope that like you or like me I hope that your career is in these four walls or maybe with any luck it would be a different set of four walls <laughs> just like across the street um, but I hope that you are here for many many years to experience what I think that the three of us can say and, and our other um, new judge as well that um, you know really long and rich experience, uh, legal experience, and legal career uh, in our profession, adding to, uh, adding to our legal profession in this community. Um, so uh, I have to say I'm really happy that your family is here, your wife is here. One of the things that when I was um, my investiture and Judge Egan spoke at it, and I didn't realize at the time how important this was, but he talked about the importance of your spouse being here. And uh, in my case, it was several judges' wives and my husband. Um, so it's kind of different. But um, it's a commitment for the whole family. And I'm so glad that you're here to share in this commitment and to understand what a commitment it is because you will get phone calls at 2 in the morning, like we do. Um, and you will get phone calls, you know, Friday afternoon at 6 o'clock when you're planning on going to a fish fry. Um, but, uh, you know, I understand we're going to support him and you wouldn't be here by his side if that weren't the case. And so I'm so glad that you are here. And I, maybe, maybe I didn't understand the commitment of a spouse until Judge Egan pointed that out at my investiture. Um, my last couple of comments that I just want to make are about the work of being a DA. Um, it is, I think that from a judge's point of view, uh, when it comes to criminal cases, the DA truly has more power than anybody in the county. You are our top law enforcement official. And um, my guess is, is that our former DA, um, whose big, big shoes you're going to have to fill, um, big, big boots that he leaves behind. Um, I think he'll probably talk about this more, but it is an exceptionally important uh, position for our county. And I know back when I was an assistant DA, one of the, the quotes that was always important to me was the quote, discretion is the better part of valor. So I did five minutes of internet research and I found out where that came from. Uh, it actually came from Falstaff, uh, Falstaff, sorry, from Shakespeare. And uh, it is a long and convoluted quote, but it ends with the better part of valor is discretion in which they, uh, in which better part I've saved my life. And I, I, I want to leave you with that, and I want you to think about that. Discretion is the better part of valor. I am sure that in your career already, you've already realized that with the power that you have as district attorney, um, you can do great, great, great good. And you will do great good. I'm confident of that. But you also will need to figure out when to hold back. And uh, I'm confident that you will figure that out, and you probably already have figured that out. And again, um, I have to just say one like last comment. You know, we sort of had, um, I kind of jokingly say, a res regime change. Um, three new judges and a new DA. And um, it's kind of a new day in our courts. And uh, it's really exciting. And I, I feel really confident we have the blessing of, of our past judges um, and their guidance and support. And they've been here for so many things. But you're the last piece of this change. And uh, it's just really exciting to see this new uh, group come in and this new um, change in Portage County, the criminal justice system. And uh, I'm just so confident that you're just going to succeed 
we're going to have you here for a long time. So thank you. Thank you. Our next uh, speaker uh, is the immediate past district attorney, and uh, this county has had a history, uh, a long history of really good district attorneys. And uh, I can go back all the way to uh, Bill Babbage, uh, who was our district attorney, became a state senator, and ended up on the United or on the Wisconsin Supreme Court. And uh, uh, and of course, Tom Negan, you are probably the longest serving district attorney, I would guess, uh, at, at 20 years. And, uh, and of course, uh, there were others, Mars Rashevitz and Dan Golden. And, and I go back and search my memory, many, many good district attorneys. And of course, uh, our second newest judge, I guess Mike Judge Zell is our newest one. Uh, but uh, Bowie Malewski is uh, the immediate past district attorney and uh, did a wonderful job. Now he's a circuit court judge and he's here to say a few words. Thanks, Judge. <coughs> Ranch to see me, I think so. All right. uh, thank you and uh, thank you, Cass, for the opportunity to say a few words on this very important day for you. Um, before I came down, I was thinking about my investiture of nine years, seven months, and five days. Yes, uh, excluding today's data, we don't count the day of sentencing and credit. I uh, know that. Um, I read a little letter from uh, the Department of Corrections. And, <laughs> but those nine years, seven months, and five days of service as district attorney were uh, some of the from that time to this day, I should say, from this this stretch of from that time of my service into this new investiture, I should say, this uh, swearing for you, um, you know, it is uh, quite a change that occurred, uh, and it's quite it's quite an experience for me. And I know that you're doing a great job as a district attorney. Uh, when I stood in branch two and raised my hand before those assembled, uh, it took the oath from my uncle. Uh, it. Like today, uh, it meant a lot, and uh, I was thinking about that when I said to everybody that one of the things I wanted to work on was transparency. I wanted to work on website. Just looking back at my notes, got the website up, um, and uh, I wanted to uh, do a few things like add an assistant district attorney. We got that done. Uh, now you're you're taking over an office, and I took over from uh, Judge Fleischer, district attorney, you can judge, you can. I had four prosecutors, and we have now a total of six in that office, including yourself. Uh, you, have a, you have a great office, 13 people that you'll be managing, and a little bit of over a million dollar budget. You are blessed to know that you serve with excellent judges. Uh, judges Egan, Judge Fuga, Judge Fleischer, Judge Shannon, Judge Baker. All these people have given you confidence, and I know that you will take into this uh, position as sort of your foundation under points. You are embarking on a great journey of justice, serving as the district attorney for Portage County. You begin with your prosecutor, uh, prosecution background that began in 2010 as a special prosecutor in St. Croix County for a year. You are hired by the district attorney Egan in 2011, and, and in 13, you and I joined uh, forces to speak. I can say emphatically, ladies and gentlemen, that Cass Cousins was my go to prosecutor during my time. And so many different matters during our time together between 13 and 2018. Uh, you were that person that I would speak to and, and make sure our cases were done correctly. Uh, whether it was research, whether it was going into court on a difficult motion, you helped uh, this uh, new prosecutor during my times, taking the legislature and having to take the reins as the managing attorney uh, and the district attorney for this county. You left our office, of course, went to the assistant district, uh, excuse me, the assistant attorney general's office, attorney general's office, and as an AAG, you did excellent work. And everyone should know that. He is a regional drug prosecutor, and he has consistently, uh, and I'm sure he just closed out some of your cases, and that's something to take over now. Uh, if you don't know, he would be managing those cases with a prosecutor in our office, 
I had a couple with you and other uh, prosecutors that are here. Uh, and he was really the person that came up with uh, Chaos uh, would do a vertical prosecution on, on these drug cases, and we would work out that uh, if we could uh, potentially flip that last delivery, we would want to try to get all the way up to that source, even if that source was in Chicago or even all, all the way down to Texas. Uh, if you go to Mexico, great. Uh, Cass, uh, you'll find out law enforcement already, already knows this, and, and the office knows this, the prosecutors in our office know this, and the public, uh, I think, will or uh, already does. He's an incredibly hard worker. He's multifaceted, as I've indicated, yet he's extremely humble. He's very affectionate to his family, his friends, and he has that needed sense of discretion when necessary. No matter the case he treated, treats it with seriousness, no matter how small, how large. His skills are worn out in like a Martin case, which one of Portage County's very few persistent repeater cases, uh, which he calmly and collectively prosecuted an individual that upon conviction automatically had to be sentenced to prison for life. Extremely high, extremely very high uh, type of uh, case. The stress on it was very high for all parties, the judge, defense attorney, everyone. And even through what happened after that, uh, when there was a bit of turmoil in the courtroom, he was calm and collected. He prosecuted the Kyle Lincoln case with Assistant Attorney Zell, now Judge Zell, another very difficult case. And he went up against one of the better uh, criminal defense attorneys in the state, uh, Corey Schwartz, who, of course, is the public Kyle Britton prosecutor. Yes, you are a great prosecutor. You join, as we heard, a long line of excellent district attorneys who have gone on to many different things. Supreme Court justices, state senators, state assembly members, uh, judges. The great DA team that's here has, a, has your back that wants to join you in your work as district attorneys. You have a open position in the diversion department of Phil, uh, and you have a diversion department that you can do what you want with. And I encourage you to keep pushing forward on that idea, as we heard from Judge Baker and others, that it is okay to give persons a second chance. It is okay to work with law enforcement, the defense counsel, and others to say, you know what? This person is safe. This person can be uh, rehabilitated, and we will do so within the confines of the district attorney's office and through the courts, because we believe that they're they meet that there and that diversion. Use your discretion. Even when there's challenges, remember politics is not part of the district attorney's office. No matter what we hear in the public, no matter how much the rule of law is challenged, no matter how the pressures from governors saying they're gonna get rid of the district attorney, actually removing district attorneys, keep your uh, nose to the grindstone, as I know you will. And always, always, as I know your wife will, Cooper, they will have your back. We all will have your back. We are very excited for you to take your oath of office. I'm very excited to see you as the person succeeding me. And uh, good luck. Good luck, guys. <laughs>
the benefit of uh, his uh, observations and advice. And I really want to appreciate the food bear for what he has meant to Portage County for decades. <laughs> and that said, I've known uh, Cass Cousin for over a decade. Uh, from the time he first started in the DA's office here in Portage County, uh, through his work with the Attorney General's office, um, still working uh, in this area. I tend to echo the previous statements I got for tenure, uh, that we've been able to keep uh, uh, Cass uh, in our area as uh, his spouse is a very accomplished person on her own. Uh, the, uh, Uh, the court, uh, and I believe that uh, Cass uh, has the uh, knowledge, the experience, and the thoughtfulness uh, that, to qualify him for this very difficult position. He also has a great sense of right and what is right, and he has a great sense of humanity and appreciates uh, that each individual is human and does make mistakes and that uh, you have to take that into account. As a district attorney and the district attorney, he will hold uh, uh, one of the most impactful positions uh, in the justice system. It is the uh, district attorney who has awesome power uh, that is matched only by the awesome responsibility that that uh, position carries. Uh, the DA, and this cast knows, but I don't know that everyone who, uh, er everyone here does not necessarily know that the district attorney uh, must determine based on provable facts and circumstances whether to charge a case, what charge to make, who to charge, and what to ask for in terms of uh, punishment for the individual who is convicted, or whether to uh, seek some other form of uh, deferral uh, on a criminal case, uh, such as the programs that uh, Judge Molevsky uh, initiated when he was in the DA's office. The DA's decision must be based on what can be proved by evidence beyond a reasonable doubt, and based on what is just, fair, and right, not just what we think should happen. The DA uh, is a position that is partisan. One must run as a uh, Democrat or Republican or some other party, but one cannot and should not base decisions made in that office uh, on politics. And I have great confidence that Cass respects that and will follow that. The DA is responsible for protecting the rights of crime victims as well as criminal defendants alike. Victims have the right to be heard and their input must be respected. And DAs must, and Cass will, be, remain sensitive to what uh, crime victims are going to. But what he will not do and what a DA cannot do is cede their discretion to the victim. DAs, as they must, remain obedient to the law and the Constitution of the United States and Wisconsin. Likewise, the DA uh, cannot uh, endeavor to win cases at all costs. That's not their job. Their job is to do what is right and just. Uh, DAs are the ones who are the good guys to the system and they have to follow the rules in order to achieve a just result. DAs aren't allowed to take shortcuts. And while uh, they are entitled and should make strong blows in the interest of justice, all those blows must be fair. Cast will be fair. A criminal wrongdoer must be held accountable in a way that does not violate the Constitution. The 
the uh, this is important so that the defendant uh, understands that when convicted, he was convicted justly based on the facts. And he was convicted fairly and that the appropriate punishment was given so that he has no excuse. The DA must honor the rights of the defendant to have their day in court and not coerce a plea. The uh, best way to rehabilitation of those who are guilty is to first assure them that they were treated fairly that they were heard, and that uh, they have a punishment that is appropriate. And I have all confidence that CAS will do that. And in doing that, uh, the public will have great confidence in what he does. Because everyone, uh, at some time or another, probably has a friend or a relative, or perhaps themselves, who have fallen foul of the uh, criminal laws. and. I have found over the years that if you treat them fairly, they appreciate it, and they have respect for the system, and they follow and take their punch. The uh, DA also has great power and responsibility at criminal sentencing to advise the judge and make the recommendation to the judge what is right. And in doing so, the DA really has a balancing act that may not always be appreciated, either too light or too harsh, but it is a balancing act where this DA has to consider input from the victim, consider the gravity and seriousness of the offense, consider what it takes to protect the public, what is needed to rehabilitate the defendant, and what it will take to prevent the defendant and others like him from repeating their criminal acts. He also has to consider how many jail beds we have available in the county, how many taxpayers don't uh, appreciate putting people away forever and requiring greater and greater jail beds, uh, county budget, state budget for prison, we can't send everyone to prison. So that's why uh, his discretion is uh, important for a just result. I can tell you, for over a decade, Jack uh, Cass has shown himself able, able to take on all these responsibilities. And he will have the confidence of the public as he uh, goes through his uh, duties. Uh, the Portage County will be in great need. So, Attorney Cousins, if you could please step up. Well, have you face our friends? Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Cassidy W. Cousins. I, Cassidy W. Cousins. Who have been appointed to the office of District Attorney of Portage County. Who have been appointed to the office of District Attorney of Portage County. But have not yet entered upon the duties thereof. But have not yet entered to the duties thereof. Swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution. Swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And will faithfully discharge the duties. And will faithfully discharge the duties of said office. Of said office. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me go. So help me go. <laughs> First thing I'm going to do is tip the laptop screen back a little bit. <laughs> a month ago, when I was told that uh, the 
another core we can, today we can see about this much <laughs> so let's try not to make that mistake again <clears throat> i want to first extend my deepest thanks to everyone here for taking the time out of your day to come to this swearing and ceremony most people who come to this car room uh, don't really have a choice in the matter. <laughs> you all came willingly to listen to these speakers, to watch me be sworn in, and now uh, to listen to me talk for uh, just a little bit. Well, it might not be the nice day out. I do realize that it is summer and that it's a Friday afternoon, uh, and you've all still come, so uh, I can't thank you enough for doing that. Some of you just had to walk down the block, and some of you had to travel to a great distance. Who is here today? Uh, in speaking with you today, I want to first recognize and thank some of the different groups of folks that have attended the ceremony. I also want to talk about my career path a little bit and uh, why I want to be your district attorney, and also explain to you some of the goals that I've set for myself with the promises that I make to you um, beyond the oath that I, I make today. Um, so, for thank yous, first, thank you to the law enforcement who are present uh, here today. Portage County is incredibly fortunate uh, to have some of the highest caliber law enforcement that any community could ask for. And I want to particularly recognize Sheriff Lucas, Chief Russo, and Chief Fox uh, for their encouragement and support so far. And I'm so much looking forward to working with you and your departments uh, in the coming years. Uh, also, thank you to the other local attorneys uh, in attendance. We are very fortunate in this community uh, to have an excellent community of attorneys who are intelligent, diligent, ethical and just very pleasant to work with. Uh, working with you all again is something that I'm looking forward to very much. Thank you also to the attorney for the Public Defender's Office. Public defenders are absolutely essential for our legal system to function, and even though they may be an adversary in the course of a court hearing, um, they are partners in the goal of ensuring justice for all. I received a lot of encouragement from the Public Defender's Office uh, as I was seeking this appointment, which might seem a little strange uh, to someone on the outside, uh, but I think in reality it shows the collegiality, uh, the mutual respect that exists within the legal system uh, in, this, in this county. So, uh, sadly, I think they are joining us in spirit, at least for the ceremony. Uh, they may come later uh, for the uh, reception. Uh, there's a little com uh, competition between events. I believe one of their colleagues was having their 15 year work anniversary at Wisconsin Rapids. Office, but uh, I come to realize that scheduling this on a Friday afternoon was kind of a bold, uh, but not really. Nice. <laughs> but I can do it again maybe on Wednesday or Tuesday. Uh, thank you to local political figures and representatives who are here. Um, I really look forward to working uh, with you all and being someone that can listen, help, and collaborate. Uh, thank you to so many friends from the community and, and also from other places around the state or country. Uh, seeing you all here really does put a smile on my face. Thank you to my parents. And to my wife's uh, parents and her family uh, for coming from some distance. Your love and support is what I value above all else. Uh, speaking of family, if anyone was hoping to see my son Cooper here, um, <laughs> you're going to have to come to the reception instead because I think about at this point in my speech, you would have that camera knocked over and <laughs> running down the hallway screaming. So, um, yeah, so uh, he's, he's still in school. Thank you to my wife, Jen. I will have more to say uh, to her in a moment uh, about her role in getting me to this point, but I wanted to make you that result. Thank you to the courthouse staff and the court of courts office and everybody who works here. Um, even after having been away for years, um, coming back um, and just um, seeing her again, it was, it was like coming home and made her feel very, very long. Uh, thank you to the DA's office, attorneys, and staff. Um, I already know with everyone, and thank you for the ceremony. Um, but I just want to say again um, how excited I am to rejoin your office as the, uh, as the bishop. Um, thank you to uh, sitting judges Zell, there he is, and Lusky and Baker. Um, <clears throat> I can't think of three better individuals to serve on the bench <laughs> for this county. Uh, I know that as we work together, uh, even in those cases where we disagree, that the years of friendship and respect that I have for each one of you uh, is something that will keep our relationship constructive and positive. Uh, thank you, Judge Lugar, for your many years of service to this county. Um, for agreeing to MC this event, I know that your uh, your dance card is very full. Of these, so, uh, thank you, and, and thank you also for providing me so much of my education and my legal experience over the years that I practice in front of you uh, as a young attorney. 
And uh, finally, just a very special thank you to Judge Egan um, for your kind words and for administering the oath. Um, it's such an honor to receive the oath from Judge Egan, who, as you heard, um, uh, was the district attorney of this county and then who hired me uh, over 11 years ago, if you can believe it. Um, I'm not originally from Bridge County, and I specifically moved here to work uh, in the district attorney's office. Uh, as I was researching different offices that had openings, I learned that Tom Egan was one of the most highly respected DAs in the state, and that working for him would really be a great opportunity. Uh, other than that fact, uh, I knew very little about the area. Um, I did uh, meet three different people while I was in Addison during law school from Stevens Point, and I can say each one of them is just an absolutely incredible person. So there was that. And I also knew Stevens Point had a university and a brewery, <laughs> like most people. Um, so that was pretty much it. So uh, armed with that fairly limited knowledge, I took a chance and uh, moved to Orange County. I didn't know until later that uh, VA Egan had also taken a chance on me as well, that there were other candidates who probably had more experience, but that he saw in me a potential uh, of someone who was going to be a career prosecutor devoted to this community. Um, obviously, being given this chance changed my life, and it's something that I will be eternally grateful for. Uh, I came to love Stevens Point in Portage County. Um, despite what you've heard about tenure and estate <laughs> plans, I truly, do, I truly do love this area. And I live here because I love it. I love it for all of the obvious reasons that, that you all love it and made your home here. The combination of the city with small town charm, but that's still vibrant, evolving, and growing, combined with uh, wonderful rural communities, the elite businesses and universities that bring in so much life and energy, and more than anything, the people that live here in the community that they form. So when I moved here, I made friends, I met my wife, we got married, and started a family. So when you can't choose uh, where you come from, you can't choose where you live, and I, I have chosen this area to live. I'd only been in the DA's office for about a year when Louis was first elected DA. He became, for me, a wonderful boss, mentor, and a friend. And he gave to me the perfect combination of guidance and autonomy. Uh, and it was during those years that I think I really built the foundation of who I am today as a prosecutor. <clears throat> I did uh, sort of eventually realize that someday Louis would move on from me. And I began to have the notion that someday I might have the experience and knowledge uh, to serve myself. Uh, I set this as a long-term goal for myself, and I've worked towards it in many ways over the years. <clears throat> Something unexpected happened along the way. In 2018, the Wisconsin Department of Justice offered me a position uh, that had just been created, actually, by the legislature, uh, where they would place an assistant attorney general in, in central Wisconsin, uh, rather than in Madison, uh, where all the other attorneys were. And this allowed me to join DOJ while still um, living in Stevens Point, which was a uh, dream come true at the time. Uh, in my role as an assistant attorney general, I traveled around the state, uh, prosecuting some of the most serious and complex homicide and conspiracy cases. Uh, many of those cases involved people who died from drug overdoses. Uh, I love this job. It was the perfect evolution of my career <clears throat> as a fairly, uh, still fairly young prosecutor. I had a much smaller caseload. Each case was complicated and challenging. It required me to deep dive into factual and legal issues beyond what had been required me before. It forced me to expand my legal knowledge and my skills as a trial attorney. And every day it pushed me out of my comfort zone, both literally and figuratively. Uh, one month I was trying a two-week cold case homicide in Columbia County, and the next I was up in Biles County, at the very top of the state, uh, working on a complicated multi-defendant drug trafficking conspiracy. But something more happened uh, during this time. Over my years uh, with DOJ, I traveled a lot, trying cases, but also training law enforcement and prosecutors, and was really exposed to the inner workings of different justice systems uh, throughout many different communities and different counties. I never really compared these systems uh, and recognized patterns between them. And I became more interested in the role a DA should play, not just in prosecuting individual criminal cases, but working to improve and refine the justice system as a whole. Jumping forward to Wednesday, April 6, 2022, the very first thing I did when I woke up uh, was check the news on my phone and saw that District Attorney Lou Molesky had been elected to become the next court circuit court judge. I will admit, um, with a small child, I was asleep probably at 10, 10 nine nights. I didn't, I didn't stay up for the, the final results. Uh, I was aware of how 
that but if Louis elected, there would be an opportunity for me to act on this, this long term goal of mine. But during the campaign, I had taken an approach of basically deciding not to decide. And that was, that was nice because it made it very easy for anyone to ask me what my plans were. I could just say, I don't know. <laughs> that was the honest answer. But now, it would have been a long term goal of mine for so long that it required a decision in a fairly short period of time. I will admit that I didn't immediately leap out of bed and rush to start my application for the appointment because it really was a very big decision. Deep down, I knew what I wanted and what I was ultimately going to do, but I wanted to understand it being such a major decision, uh, why I wanted to become DA and what I would do if I received that appointment. And um, as chance would have it, I had a hearing that day in Price County in Phillips, Wisconsin. So I had a lot of window time uh, to reflect on you know, what I wanted to do. And during that, I, I realized the why, uh, and, and it was all on these lines. I wanted to be district attorney because I thought and I felt that I was ready to take the next step in my evolution as a prosecutor. After having learned how to be a trial attorney, after having gained a level of experience where I could train and educate others, and now after having seen judicial systems in many counties across the state, I now wanted to progress also to becoming a member and a leader for the judicial system in the community where I live, providing outreach and education and feeling the impact of my work on the people who live here. I wanted to work directly with law enforcement, not just on individual cases, but on the essential issues, such as how to create systems to reduce recidivism and reduce crime overall. I wanted to be part of the drive to improve the overall functioning and efficiency of the world. I wanted to help create a system that the highest level of integrity and ethics within the DA's office. I wanted to work to develop a team of people beneath me committed to doing justice and protecting the public. I wanted to identify where our existing laws fell short uh, or are unfair and work with others to change them. I wanted to do my part to help create a system and a culture where victims and the public at large have confidence that our justice system does produce justice. So that is why I saw this appointment. And that is what I want to accomplish as a district attorney. Um, I want to take this opportunity briefly to share a few of my specific goals that I've set for myself over the next two years. Um, first, I want to continue the current trajectory of the DA's office as a pleasant and professional place to work, comprised of a diligent team of attorneys and staff committed to aggressively and ethically pursuing justice. Second, I want to work with other judicial system partners to identify if there are improvements or solutions that can be made to the system of cash bail, balancing uh, the need to prevent unnecessary pretrial incarceration while also making sure that the public is safe from violent or habitual offenders, even while their cases are working their way through the system. As part of that, I want to help educate the public on the purpose and legal requirements of bail to address misconceptions about the functioning of our justice system uh, at large. Uh, so maybe a little bit more on the weeds, but over time, I want to review how this DA's office provides discovery and exculpatory information to criminal defendants to see if that system can be improved. I've traveled around and I've seen a lot of counties where this is a problem uh, that's persistent but fixable and can avoid unnecessary case delays, which help no one, especially victims of crime. Uh, I want to build strong relationships with organizations throughout the county, uh, both inside and outside the criminal justice framework. Uh, by strong relationship, I mean open dialogue and the ability to share ideas in the sense that the district attorney is here to listen and to help. Uh, I will continue. Uh, the excellent diversion program has enabled hundreds of young or first time offenders in this county to receive counseling, supervision, and rehabilitation without being saddled with the criminal conviction necessarily and increasing the likelihood that we won't see them in court again. Uh, finally, I, will, I uh, as a goal for myself, I will continue this office's commitment to prioritizing the needs and rights of crime victims. I will provide the greatest time and resources to these types of offenses, especially those involving children, and I will ensure that we continue to strictly adhere to the victim rights requirements of this as well. So, I have just taken the oath of office, but I also have a few more promises to make to you all. First, I promise to work hard and do my best every day. After receiving this appointment, I have heard from dozens and dozens of people expressing uh, how happy they are that I'm coming back to the office. And that support has been just overwhelming and touching, but frankly, uh, a little terrifying. Uh, I am concerned a little that perhaps I'm in a honeymoon phase where uh, the only direction for me to go at this point is down. <laughs> 
I promise to do everything in my power to live up to your expectations. I am very aware, supportive comments notwithstanding, that I have been appointed to this position and not elected. I will do everything in my power uh, to earn that honor and to your side. Second, I promise to listen. I think that good listening in general is a superpower and more specifically is one of the most powerful tools in a prosecutor's arsenal. I also think it's the foundation of any good relationship. So while I can't promise that I will always agree, I do promise that I will always listen. Uh, that's a promise that I also make to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, I recognize that the Office of the District Attorney carries with it astonishing powers and discretion. And Judge Egan has described some of those to you. In many cases, and really in most cases, these powers are wielded away from the public eye, uh, public scrutiny, or even their knowledge. And like any power, it can be used for good or bad. I firmly believe that the Office of the District Attorney has. <clears throat> the potential to make our community as a whole a better place. So, I promise to always use these powers for good. I had a professor during my last year of law school who made this recommendation to us as soon to be lawyers. He said, have everything you do as a lawyer be something that you would be comfortable having being printed on the front page of the local newspaper. I've always followed that advice. I always will. So, I want to close uh, at long last by again, thanking you all for being here today and invite you all to a reception that we're holding at four at Chef's Kitchen, uh, very close to here. Um, I would love to see you all there. Um, there were so many people I tried to greet some of you as you were walking in and there were many that I missed. So uh, I'd love to uh, thank you in person and, uh, if, if you are able. Um, I would like to extend uh, a particular thank you to my wife, Jen. And even though it's a cliche, like many cliches, it's true. I wouldn't be here uh, if it for your love, your support, and your encouragement. Thank you for being my partner and for helping me to realize my potential. My last promise is to you, and it is that even in moments of stress or difficulty in this job, which I know there will be, I will always be present for you, and that you and our family will always be our priority. Thank you.